Hello guys, Moritz here and today we are going to revisit the problem we had with the Raspberry Pi power pack version 1.2 and a lot of you suggested to put a bigger capacitor across the output of those two USB ports and you can see there are already some capacitors but today we'll try to put on a bigger one and see if that fixes the problem and to check whether this board could be used as an uninterruptible power supply circuit. So I found these two capacitors, which are the largest ones that I have lying around right here, which are 220 microfarads and 1000 microfarads. So we'll first try the 220 microfarads one, and then we'll try the 1000 one, and if both of them don't work, we will put them in parallel and see if it works then. So if you got this electrolytic capacitor, the negative side is always marked with this white line right here. And that is always the negative side. So we will have to solder it like so right here. But I will put some cables onto the capacitor because it's a little bit hard to get right in here. So here I've got some pieces of wire, I already stripped the ends and now I will pre-tin the ends then we will solder it onto the capacitor and the board I will also trim those ends a little bit because they are in my opinion a little bit long so that's a little bit better. Here's the board and I will just solder directly to those capacitors on there. So the left side was the negative connection and the right one was the positive connection and yeah that's connected. So now we will hook it up to the Raspberry Pi and also get a connection to the scope so we can see and hear also so the last time whenever the voltage dropped too low, the hard drive made a clicking noise and also the Raspberry Pi shut down. But today we will also connect up the scope to the output. So probably directly on the capacitor right here. So we can see what happens on the voltage side on the oscilloscope. So I hooked up the ATX Raspberry to the Raspberry Pi power pack, which then outputs to the hard drive and to the Raspberry Pi. And in this configuration, I already see one problem because if I want to turn off the Raspberry Pi, the ATX Raspberry will cut the power to the Raspberry Pi and therefore the Raspberry Pi power pack will kick in and turn on. So ideally the ATX Raspberry would be behind the Raspberry Pi power pack, so on one of these two connectors. But I've connected it like this because now I've got one wire going to the hard drive and one exclusively going to the Raspberry Pi. First of all, we will need to plug in the battery. And now if we turn the Raspberry Pi on, you can see it starts up. I will also connect the power to the ATX Raspberry and turn that one on as well. And you can see by the green light, that it is on. I also forgot to hook up the scope, which I will just do now, with a sketchy connection, just as always. Now I will set up a trigger on the scope and first turn on the Raspberry Pi and stuff again. So I've set up a trigger. Let's move this up like so. Do a single. I will disconnect the power right now. And there you can see the voltage drop. So the voltage drops down to around 3 volts. And that is obviously too low. So let's now connect the other capacitor and we'll try this again. So I've connected the larger capacitor for 1000 microfarads. So let's wait until the Raspberry Pi is completely booted. So the Raspberry Pi booted and I will again set up a single trigger and now I will unplug the power one two three and we didn't hear any clicks from the hard drive but there's a message here on the screen i don't know if you can read it but it says ext4 file system error device sda2 ext4 journal check start 56 detected a board journal and then it says remounting file system read only so 
as you can see still this is not enough but I will plug in the ATX Raspberry again and try to turn off the Raspberry Pi and you can see this time we can trigger the shutdown script but now it says read only file system so clearly this is still not a big enough capacitor so let's try to put these two capacitors in parallel so I've soldered the two capacitors together in the most jankiest way ever so the Raspberry Pi is starting again and there we got the lock-in screen and now I will once again set up a trigger on the scope and disconnect the power now so you could hear a click of the hard drive which is always a bad sign and we didn't get a voltage drop on the scope at least it didn't trigger so let's see if the shutdown check or the shutdown script works and turn off the Raspberry Pi power pack so now we are fully powered by the ATX Raspberry and I will just try to turn it off and the shutdown check script works so now you can see adding capacitors to the Raspberry Pi power pack will lead to a working uninterruptible power supply. But I have to say this is very sketchy and you should probably use a bigger size capacitor. You will need at least 1220 microfarads for this Raspberry Pi power pack to work as an uninterruptible power supply. But I will say that it would be better that you use at least 2000 microfarads or even bigger size capacitor which is better but then you will also need a current limiting resistor and if you go with a super capacitor um, a discharge resistor would be good. Well this works as you can see so here's the circuit once again. So we just soldered these two capacitors right to the output. It would be better if the capacitors are near the output connections of this board because even this small piece of wire adds resistance to the whole thing so it will only perform better if you get it closer to the board. So we've got the Raspberry, ATX Raspberry connected here going into the power pack, the power pack to the Raspberry Pi and the hard drive and this works. But as I said in a previous video, let me disconnect all of this, I have worked on my own circuit for this and I will just show you the circuit I have created and now the most sketchiest thing ever this is the circuit I've come up with but we'll, we'll actually take a look at this in the in another video not today but today I will only show you some of the core components of this so we got the same buck converter that's on here we got a boost converter um, this is a pretty common um, battery charging circuit um, you can find them all over the internet and we also have a big MOSFET and a small transistor which I don't know what it is for and we got some LEDs that will show us the state of our uninterruptible power supply and the way this whole thing works and we also got this little 470 microfarads capacitor on here which we could have also used for the other thing but this circuit works a little bit different so we can connect it directly to the ATX Raspberry which is right there got a cable on that which is on the output so I got this big 12 volt battery from which I will power the whole Raspberry Pi but I'll show you so the battery connects right here <laughs> what is this mess <laughs> And also the MOSFET I'm talking about is this little small thing right here, not the big one which is not used. That was only part of the prototyping process. But if I can make some space so nothing can touch these wires, we will connect our 12 volt supply on these two cables right here. And you can already see the, th the green LED lights up, which means that we are currently on our main power supply. I will now plug in the battery pack and now you can see it really well. But the red LED on the charger now turned on because it's trying to charge the battery. But we also got another red LED which is right here which is currently not lit. Which will show us that the Raspberry Pi is powered by our battery. So I will turn everything on and you can see that it starts up. So now the Raspberry Pi is only running via this 12 volt battery and now if we disconnect one of these terminals we can simulate a power outage and let's wait until the Raspberry Pi is completely started and there's the lock-in screen now if I disconnect this nothing happens you don't even hear a click in the hard drive and as you can see I can touch and play with it however I want you can also see that now the red LED right here is lit 
which means that we are in battery operated mode and the circuit I put together right here can provide up to 3 amps continuously even when you're playing with the input side and it perfectly works. So in the next video or in a future video I will cover this circuit and make it into a PCB and then we will try it out on the Raspberry Pi. So I think this is a much better solution and the circuit on here is not that hard to build yourself because as you can see I only use components that are available on eBay or Amazon or wherever you want and this works fine so I, I will disconnect the battery put it away and you can see there are no other wires than the power from coming from the battery and now we'll try to turn off the Raspberry Pi and we don't get any errors and that works so if you like this video give it a thumbs up share and subscribe and I will see you in the next one bye